welcome back again, Olga and Clarissa. It's nice to have you again. Uh, <laughs> always excited to talk to you, and I keep babbling away before we start a recording, so I almost forget we, ha we have a task here. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I was thinking that this time we were going to talk about with Joel. Uh, as I, I told you before, I had a, a video together with Bitten about with Joel, but I think it's a very important subject and you can always learn more and have more uh, ideas and ways to deal with it and so on. And uh, well, I'm just, you know, with Joel, what are your first thoughts? And, and uh, yeah, please share. <laughs> Okay. Well, I don't mind starting. Um, definitely when I work with clients, one of the things that I like to do for them is to pick a start day. And so that way they know what the next period of time is going to look like. I often find between day three and five, even three and seven are the worst. And sometimes people can expect for about 14 days, but in those days before starting the detox, you can get prepared. Like, have re all the foods you need available so that you don't have to go to the store because that's going to be something that's going to keep you safe. And you're also not going to feel like it because you're going to feel headachey. Some people have real insomnia. Some people have flu-like symptoms um, and super irritable. So as long as people know to kind of expect these things and they have what they need to be able, in the fridge anyways, to be able to help get them through that period, then I think the more that they know what they're experienced, the better equipped they are to handle it. And as well, definitely when I'm working with people, I let them know that this is a period of time where you will need more intense support. So whether that's reaching out to your community, uh, reaching out to me, alerting your family that you might not be so kind to them in the next few days and that you're going to feel like you're starving, but you're not going to die. And that we can do some things to manage the intense hunger that will come up for you. Maybe that's consuming more of the foods that are safe and are on your food plan. We can also use, um, some sea salt, uh, drink more water because we're often dehydrated implement some glutamine, which is an amino acid and helps regulate your blood sugar, potentially consume some coconut oil, MCT oil in between meals, which will help keep you satiated and have a bunch of things that you can do for yourself to comfort yourself and soothe. So whether that's breathing, taking a bath, um, you know, watch and watching TV, things like that. I mean, people have to be careful because it can be a trigger for them because food is not only physiological, it's also behavioral. So they have to watch like if they're doing all the same things that they used to do while they were eating, that can be very troublesome. So they might have to change up their routine. But I think the important thing is just to reach out, like the Facebook groups, let people know what's going on, get that support and know that it will end. And once it ends, it gets better. And like anything, I mean, I definitely worked with alcohol and drugs. You're not going to die. Um, it's going to feel like you're dying sometimes, but we've all been through it. We've all done it. And that actually use that pain to know how dangerous the, the sugar drug you're using is causing your body that you are in physical withdrawal. That's a super scary thing. So those are some of the tips and hints that I usually use, but it, it's individual for everybody, for sure, withdrawal in general. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Parisa. And I really think you make a, make a good point there that to realize that what we eat can make, make you have these kind of symptoms when you, so you really have a withdrawal when you, when you go off them. That's really heavy stuff. <laughs> it is. Yeah. So please, Molly, would you like to share also? Yeah, sure. And I think this is, you know, the term like keto flu gets thrown around a lot, but really what we have to remember is that it is actual withdrawal. And I think, you know, kind of what Clarissa had said, like arming ourselves with knowledge is, you know, when we know like what this is, we can name it, then we can take some responsibility and say, oh, okay, like they told me this was maybe going to happen or 
instead of just wondering like, why am I so moody all of a sudden we realize like, oh, blood sugar swings because we're withdrawing or just that mood imbalance that can happen as, you know, we're getting different neurochemicals going on. So certainly arming people with knowledge is one of my favorite things to do as well. I always say days three to five up to 14, same idea. I always say, I promise by day 21 to 45, you're going to notice all kinds of different things. But I also want to remind people, one of those characteristics of the disease of addiction makes us intolerant to illness, right? Like we get so annoyed that we feel bad or, you know, like just think about when our children are sick or our spouses are sick or whatever. And we're like, like if it were me, I would be doing whatever, right? So we have that same attitude and now we're feeling really crappy going through this withdrawal process and we get really irritated. And what's the first thing we want to do? We want to solve the problem because we so often have just taken it on ourselves to solve it ourselves. And so we went for the thing, right? Whatever food item it was that made us feel better, we went for it. And I hear people talk about this, right? They want to, you know, maybe they want to try like a keto bread or a keto cracker, right? To just kind of mimic if I were ill before I would have gone for these things or can I do diet seven up or, you know, all these different things. And, and the reminder is, you know, sure. At the end of the day, you're an adult. You can do what you want. You're right. You can do those things, but do those things get you closer to the outcomes you're looking for, right? So there's that conversation but also there are other things we can do, you know, bone broth with some salt in it, drinking straight pickle juice, just having some pickles to munch on, you know, those kinds of things will get those electrolytes back so that you're not feeling so, you know, in a pinch, sure. Zero, uh, like zero sugar Powerade or Gatorade to get you through. Are those my first go-tos with people? No, but am I going to condemn you if that's what you use? No, I want you to get through it so that you never have to go through it again. Right. And so it's, I, you know, like Clarissa said, it's so bioindividual. I worked with a woman one time that was convinced her blood sugar was dropping, just dropping. And she's like giving me the symptoms. And I'm like, do you have a blood sugar monitor? And she had one and she took, she, I was like, I encourage you the next time you're feeling these symptoms, please test. And it turns out she actually was not experiencing blood sugar drop. Her brain had convinced her my blood sugar, your blood sugar is dropping. You need to eat something. And not just, you know, like anything, not like, hey, go get a chicken breast and some broccoli, but like you need to eat these very specific sweet things right now to get that blood sugar back up. And so don't do it alone. Just don't do it alone. Let somebody know, let somebody know how you're feeling, sip your water, add some salt to it, bone broth with salt, whatever it might be. At the end of the day, there's, there are scientific things that we can use to make ourselves feel better, but to remember we're already going to be intolerant of that illness in us and we're going to be moody and we're going to want to go back to what those neural pathways, those rutted neural pathways are telling us to do. And this is that time to just be so mindful of what you want on the other side of it, mm. you know, so just have that mindset. So that's, that, that was the other thing I really liked what Clarissa said, as far as like pick a start date, right. And then kind of have this thing lined up and just keep in mind, like, what is the outcome I'm looking for? So that would be some of the things that I guess I would say to the, to the listening audience, the watching audience as to how I work with clients for sure. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So, so many good advices. And, you know, I was looking through the list because I think, I don't know if you do the same, but with me, when I'm working with clients, they have a list of uh, symptoms that you can have during withdrawal and you can, you know, check the boxes to, to see what symptoms you have. And it's so great because usually it's like you said, the day three or to five, they have a lot of symptoms and then you can see the curve go down sort of. And it's very good to be able to go back and check what it looked like in the beginning, because usually you keep thinking that you are so ill (laughs) and you feel very bad. And um, I mean, I was also thinking when when I was preparing that uh all these things or the symptoms that we are experiencing you you really you could really feel that you are very very ill um it, it's not like you know i have a, a small headache you can have a uh my migraine is that the, the word you know a s- severe headache and, and stomach ache and you know feeling blue and and have shield attacks and all these kinds of things and you really think you have a flu or, you know, serious illness, you need to go to the um, hospital or something. 
and to just stay stopped, not start eating again, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, using the tools and so on to get through those those worst days. Uh, it's really, it, and then it's really helpful, like you said, to have someone to talk to, to know who knows what you're going through. And for me, the big key is to have another sugar addict or food addict or, or so on, because if I'm, well, I'm, I'm always using my poor husband in, in this area yeah. and because he's not a sugar addict. And when I go to him and, and tell him, well, I'm having a craving, you know, and he's very sweet, asks me, well, what would you like, you know, kind of just asking, being very nice to me. And that's not what I need at that moment. <laughs> It's like, I, I need someone to ask me, okay, you have a craving, that's serious, you know, what can we do? How do we deal with it? Are you prepared, you know, having all these things? So I think one of, I mean, all these things that we can do with having some extra and good food to eat, drink water, having salt, all the things that you mentioned. But I think that the, the community and the support system is so important in this special, um, during this special time. And also to remember to be set on the goal, like you said, to get through those first days and to remember what it is I want on the other side, so to say. Yeah, I also think like you brought up a good point. It's so important for people to know that during that withdrawal period, they're actually at the highest risk of relapse for all the symptoms, right? We always say halts, hungry, angry, lonely, tired, sick. That's withdrawal. So you just have to know that no matter what, you can't use your drug to make you feel better. So find alternative things that you can use or you can do to get through because it will end. It sure will. But you, when you're in the middle of it, you don't think it will end. No, no you're right. <laughs> Usually the brain keeps telling me that when I'm in withdrawal, it's kind of, you know, this is what a sugar-free life is going to be like. You're going to feel so sick, so ill, and you don't get to do all those things you like and so on. You know, the brain goes blah, 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 blah all the time. And that's when I need someone to tell me, well, this isn't true. And like you said, knowledge to know about what you're doing. Some, uh, someone compared uh, starting this travel with doing another, uh, well, going somewhere um, on a journey or so on. And how do you usually prepare? Well, you need to pack some things and to mm -hmm. do some research and so on and I think that's very wise to do before you enter withdrawal to know what you expect kind of yeah, yeah. I love that analogy that's so wonderful because I always I think my clients get frustrated with me sometimes because I'm like it's an adventure right like so my job is to help people play right so in, when we're in the disease we're so black and white so my, I view my job as like okay, we're going to play. We're going to play in the gray and it's an adventure. So what do we need? We need to make sure we have a compass and a fire starter and food and water and a, an emergency blanket and a beacon and all these different things. Right. And they're like, I don't understand Molly, but it's that we don't know what's coming. And, but we have an idea that we could meet some of these things along the way. Right. So we just have to meet it as it comes and we have to do our best to have those tools and, and things along the way, you know, but ultimately it is about asking for help. And that's where I think like the sugar bomb group is a really great place. I mean, I don't know if you've been in there lately, right? But people are like, I'm hour six, I'm day 20, right? And they're saying, I'm struggling with this, that, or the other thing, or I was doing so well. And now these things are coming up, right? And there, there's some fear around it and then other people jump in and they're like no you're right on track you're doing great just keep doing this or this what is what works for me or whatever and i think it's just that reminder that while you are on this adventure that you may have never been on before other people have gone before you and it may not be the exact same adventure right maybe this is a choose your own kind of book right jump to page 45 if you want to see this happen it doesn't matter the the solution that they have to offer is always going to be the same you just have to figure out what works for you in your particular situation and so again don't do it alone whether you come to a professional or you go to a 12-step group or you go to sugar bomb in your brain it does not matter somebody will have something for you and the other big secret is this is an adventure which means you cannot get lost okay you cannot get lost on an adventure 
There is no whatever destination. We have these ideas in mind as to what we want to see happen, but how we get there is so unique to us. And I think if we can just calm down and remember that piece of it too, we don't get so worked up with that fear of like, I'm not doing it right. Oh my gosh, I'm doing it wrong. Um, I slipped now. Am I abstinent? Did I relapse? Did I, it doesn't matter. And, you know, and I have people like, what do I call that Molly? And I'm like, I don't know, a learning experience. Like, do we have to label it? Let's just keep going. Right. If we stay stuck, we'll die on this adventure. We have to keep moving forward, right? Like, unless you're going to set up shop there, but most of us don't want to until we've gotten to where we want to be until we've gotten to that place of recovery. And we have this program that we're like, yeah, this feels good. And then when it doesn't work anymore, we pack up our stuff and we go again, right? Because maybe a health thing pops up or um, we realized we had something in our food plans that isn't working for us anymore, whatever it might be, right? Children leave the house or we have children or there's a marriage or a death or whatever. That's when we can make those changes. But until then, just relax into it. Just try to enjoy the scenery as you're walking this path. Mm. So I love that analogy. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I'm thinking the same, you know, about I'm, I'm telling my clients that you can't fail, you know, when you start this journey that you can't fail, even if you do things that you didn't plan to start with, you just go back, you just keep on the direction and you can't fail because you don't know. Well, uh, I mean, recovery is a goal, but recovery is a way of living for to me. It's not I mean, it's uh, well, that's another subject for us to talk about. Is recovery and abstinence the same thing? That's also kind of interesting. I, <laughs> I can stay off drugs, but I can keep feeling very bad, of course. But to me, recovery is growing and I can't fail when I'm growing. So that's really, uh, it's really important. And I was also thinking about, you said, you know, you mentioned the sugar bomb in your brain um, group. And I think it's so great because when I started out, I was, you know, kind of alone with a book and I was thinking, well, it's me and this, and this order that, that wrote the book, you know, and now you can you just pick up the phone, you have the mobile phone and you have the Facebook groups and Instagram uh, where you can, you know, uh, get inspiration and feel that you're not alone. You have such an opportunity to do this uh, uh, in your own kitchen. You don't have to go far away. You, you just have it all there. And it's so great. It's such an opportunity to, uh, to have the community and the support during this, which you will need further on also. But to start with, it's very, very important. So it's great. Yeah, you have something more to share? I saw you unmuted, Clarissa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just going to say that addict brain, you know, wants to start immediately and wanted to start yesterday. And again, I would just encourage people to set yourself up for success because if you don't and you fail, that's just going to rock your self-esteem and going to prevent you from getting started again. But if you set yourself up for success, then it's going to make this journey easier. And it's a hard journey. So I would just, that's usually when Molly was saying, oh, my clients, you know, they, they want to get started. They want to go. And I'm totally on board with that, but let's, let's pick a day and let's make sure you're ready and have the correct support so that you can be successful. Yeah. Yeah. To lay good ground. That's good. Yeah. Well, thank you. Did you have anything more as well, Molly? Some, something else you'd like to put in? No, I mean, I think, I think ultimately, you know, the, this, we've had several conversations now and I love these. Um, I love having these kind of um, opportunities to get to speak with other colleagues, right. And have a shared conversation and shared ideas for all of our listeners and um, clients. And I think ultimately the thing I keep coming back to is time and time again, we keep coming back to community. Don't do it alone or don't feel like you have to do it alone because you're not actually alone. And I get it. I was that person that I was like, I'd rather do it by myself and know that it's going to get done and then have it be totally my responsibility or whatever, right? Like it's all on me if I pass or fail kind of deal, right? Pass or fail. And, and I don't want to give my stuff to other people and, and whatever, right? But again, it goes back to this is a shared 
load kind of journey. We need people, not that they're going to take it for us, but simply by sharing that, by having that vulnerability of like, listen, I'm in withdrawal and this sucks and I don't know what to do. And I just want to go whatever, because I'm in, you know, I can't stand that. I don't feel good, whatever. Somebody who's been there again is going to be like, I get it. I get it. And I was there too. And then day three, it changed or day four, it changed. Right. So now I've got some hope. It's like my husband, and this was back before my journey of recovery. And I mean, I was a hundred plus pounds more than I am now. And I was like, we're going to hike to this lake. And it's four and a half miles, like straight up in the mountains. <laughs> and he was like, we're all, it's right. It's right around this corner, right? Like he had like going around a, a, what are these switchbacks? And he'd be like, it's right up here. I promise it's right up here. I promise, you know, and then other hikers would be going the other way. And I'm like, how close are we? And they'd be like, you're close. Like they could see I was struggling. Right. And they weren't lying to me to lie to me. Right. They were like, no, you can do it. You're so close. Just keep going was the message. And we have to have that from other people around us. So I think if, if anything we can hammer home, whether it be about withdrawal or chronic hunger or, um, you know, how to manage PMS or any of these topics we're going to talk about, I think ultimately I'm always going to go back to, please don't feel like you have to do it alone. Somebody else has been there. Even if they're only a few hours ahead of you, somebody else has been there and they can say, yep, you're almost there. Just keep going. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Going. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to talk about community and, and shame. Uh, I had a client today that, that uh, well, she's in, in withdrawal and uh, she's been uh, relapsing and talking about shame. You know, it took a long time before she actually contacted me again. And, you know, uh, she's totally alone. So I just encourage her to go back to the, the community and pick up all those tools that, that I gave her um, to get through withdrawal. And then the next thing you need to pick up is to have some support, you know, to not do it alone. And um, yeah, stay on the bus and the scenery will change. <laughs> it really does. Thank you so much, ladies. And uh, uh, yeah, I had a new subject. You you heard that. <laughs> yeah, we'll be talking again soon. <laughs> Thank Absolutely. you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.